ladies and gentlemen, it's finally here. PS Touch, aka Photoshop Touch, has touched down on the iPad in the US store and in various other stores across the world. Here is the icon for Photoshop Touch. Now, just a point of note, just to preface this, I am not a Photoshop expert by any means of the imagination. I can just get by just barely. So just keep that in mind here. I'm gonna just give you a quick demonstration of what you can expect with Photoshop Touch. I really like this. I think those of you who are into Photoshop are gonna be really impressed with what Adobe has been able to pull off with the iPads interface. Once you load it up, you'll see something like this, help us approve our products. Um, we don't want that, just ignore that. And then you can see the interface here. At the bottom, you'll see where you can have a new project or a new image. And then at the top or in the middle, you'll see tutorials and intro. And then at the top, you'll see the various tools for exporting, sharing on Facebook, deleting and things of that nature, adjusting settings and all that. So first of all, let's start off with how about the intro? Let's see what the intro has in there and what we can expect from the intro. There it is, Photoshop Touch. So you have two options, begin a tutorial or begin a project. So since I'm new to this, I'm gonna begin a tutorial. And here are the various tutorials available for you. Uh, tons of different tutorials in here, as you can see. Lots of things to try out to get familiar with the interface uh, of Photoshop Touch. Let's try replace colors. How about that one? That one looks easy enough. And you can basically gonna just change the color of an object while retaining its check texture, shading, and detail. So let's begin that tutorial. And here's a stop sign. And then at the bottom, you'll notice you'll notice step-by-step -step, uh, instructions for you to follow there. For instance, it's starting off with step one, tap the toolbar and scroll to the magic wand tool. So that sounds easy enough. So we'll follow that step and this follow all of the steps until completion. So there is the ma magic wand tool. Um, there's the toolbar on the side. So step one is completed. Let's tap next for step two. And it says tap tolerance, increase the tolerance to 50% to prevent edge artifacts. And then you get a little tip there as well. So now we wanna find the tolerance. There's tolerance. So you just wanna tap that. And then we just increase the tolerance of 50%, just like that. That's pretty easy. And it's kind of hard to get locked in right there on 50. So what you can do, you can actually tap in here in the number box and then just type the number in directly. Hit the little check mark box there and you're good to go. So now step three, tap the red area. So tap the red area like that to select it. Next, tap the add selection icon. Tap the areas inside the O and the P to add them to the selection. So add selection icon, there we go. So tap the area inside the O and the area inside the P. So we make sure we get all that red. Then go ahead and tap next. Now tap adjustments, color balance, enter red, negatives 100, green 100, blue 100, tap apply. So now here we go. It has a little tip bar there so you know exactly where to find the color balance, balance in that menu under adjustments. So tap color balance and then the direction said Adjust the red to negative 100. So we just slide that over to negative 100. Green to positive 100. And then blue to 100% as well. And then tap apply. So you can see the stop sign has changed without adjusting any of the textures or anything like that. Tap next. And now we wanna select deselect. That is the next instruction there. So you just tap right here and then deselect and that'll deselect the magic wand tool and we're good to go. That is it folks. That is the tutorial on how to change that stop sign from a red to a greenish blue, just like that. So replacing colors. That tutorial was very easy and all the tutorials are really simple, easy to follow. They kind of guide you and hold your hand through there so you can get familiar with the Photoshop touch interface there. So let's begin a project now. And of course it wants to ask you for your current location because it wants to pull up the photos. Now I don't have any photos. This is a fresh iPad 2 installation. So what I'll do is take a screenshot. How about that? <laughs> Just to get a quick photo for this demonstration. If I can find it, there we go. So there's a screenshot and you see the photo has been imported immediately there. So tap that, it'll open that particular photo. Now try not to get confused as to what's the screenshot and what's the actual interface because you know I get confused a little bit. All right, so tap the photo, and then we can just start playing around with anything we want to do. It's that easy to import a photo and start editing. And really, as you can see, this is a pretty deep editor. I mean, there are tons of options contained within Photoshop Touch. Pretty much anything you would expect from like a Photoshop Elements type editor. It's a little, obviously, it's not full-fledged Photoshop, but it has enough basic editing tools to pull off a basic job with ease, relative ease. You can see I can hide the various 
portions of the interface so I can see full screen there, the image that I'm working with, and then of course I can get those back just by tapping that and all the rest of the interface it works similar, just like that. So now I want to show you something that I thought was really cool. It kind of caught me by surprise. It has Google Images integration, which is really, really neat. You can actually take, of course, you can do local photos, uh, just like that. You can do Creative Cloud, which is Adobe's cloud platform. You can pull in uh, photos directly from the camera, so you can take a photo just like that, of course. Uh, directly from the camera but one thing that I really liked was Google you can actually do a Google image search and it'll pull up images from Google image and then you can import those right there on the fly now obviously some of these images are going to be copyrighted so you gotta kinda use your own discernment when pulling in photos and various things of that nature but the fact of the matter is this works very well and it's really neat to be able to do this to be able to pull images directly from Google so if you need a source stock image you can pull it up just like that folks it's imported right there. This is from Google. Really neat, huh? So once you have selected that, it gives you a little copy, copyright warning at the top. Obviously, you're going to need to adhere to that. But once you do that, you just tap Add, and then it pulls it right into Photoshop Touch, just like that. And you can start editing just like you took this photo, which is really, really neat. I like this a lot. So not only do you have the Google Images importing option you also have the ability to import images from Facebook I believe I saw a Facebook option there I haven't tested that out not a huge Facebook user but the option appears to be there to do that so let's just play around with this I'll use the magic wand tool again and what should we do we'll just mess around like I said I'm no Photoshop expert but you guys probably would who who have Photoshop experience would be able to jump right into this thing and start editing photos with no problem it is that um, well of a design interface as you can see here just like um, you know a desktop version except it's just formatted for touch which is I think pulled off pretty good by Adobe I have to admit these guys did a pretty good job I know there's some skeptics out there but I think for a basic tablet photo editing app you'd be hard-pressed you'd be really hard-pressed to find something that competes with Photoshop touch and it works smooth. I haven't seen any slowdown or anything of that nature. Now, granted, the interface is different from anything you would be normally used to on an iPad, so it may take some adjustment for those of you who are just not used to using an app like this because the design is it's sort of radical. It's a, it's a departure from your normal iPad-esque app, if you will. But, you know. You'll get used to it if you want to edit some photos with Photoshop Touch. You'll get used to it real quick. Now, you also have the uh, save to camera roll functionality. Obviously, that's going to be built into there. It looks like you can share images on Facebook and, of course, the uh, cloud integration with uh, Adobe's um, proprietary cloud platform is there as well, like we mentioned earlier. It is called Photoshop Touch, folks. It is available right now on the App Store for $9.99. Normally, of course, we don't review App Store apps, but this one is big enough to warrant a look. Um, from the folks over at iDownload blog, don't you think? So what are your views on Photoshop Touch after seeing this video demonstration? Do you think it's worth the $9.99? Do you plan on purchasing it? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. This is Jeff with iDownload blog.